Okay, welcome America. Welcome Justin Bieber. Today we are going to be graphing um, a logarithmic equation for you. And I think we have one other problem on the worksheet, which I will attach. We are doing problem 36, and I don't remember the next one. I'll let you know in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with problem 36. So this is a logarithmic equation that we are graphing. So if this was rewritten in exponential form, the base would be four, right? So the parent function, think of y equals four to the x. If you plugged in zero for x, four to the zero power is one. So that original point would be zero, one. This is the logarithmic function, which is the inverse. So that first point, those x and y coordinates will be flipped. So our first point that we're gonna be working with here is at one, zero. And then from the exponential function, it would be, if you plugged in four for the exponent, four to the one power would be four. So it's one and then the base. This has been flipped, so it's the base and then one. And this is for the parent function. Now, there is a negative in front of this. So that negative is waiting for that value. So if once, you, once you plug that four in, that one is gonna become a, the y value is gonna become a negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that. Zero is just gonna remain zero. So that one is gonna to move to four, negative one. Now we don't have to worry about that negative in front of the function anymore. All right, good enough. Let's go ahead and plot those two points, our starting points, one, zero, and then four, negative one. And we're gonna do a shift. We are going to shift, this is a horizontal shift, right two and up three. But before we do that, I'm gonna graph the asymptote. So let me go ahead and, and write that down here. We're gonna shift right two and up three. Okay, so the asymptote for an exponential function, which is the inverse of a logarithmic function, is horizontal. It's normally at um, right on the x-axis. So this is the inverse. So the original parent function for the logarithmic function is going to be on the y-axis. This one has a horizontal shift to the right two. So our horizontal, or sorry, our vertical asymptote is going to move right to. And don't worry about it. Those two points that we put on there are just our starting points. We're going to move those. Good enough. All right, now I'll go ahead and move those two points right to and up three. And now, draw my graph. Are you guys quiet today because it's the last day before break? Yes. And because half the class is gone. And because all the loud people are gone. That's not true. Sarah's here. That's so mean. It is. Okay, so now the domain and the range have been switched as well from the exponential function. So in the exponential function, the domain is negative infinity to infinity, infinity. So the range for this function will be negative infinity to infinity. And the domain, all the possible x values, did I just draw with the asymptote? What did I do? You guys didn't even correct me. That's how quiet you are. What? <laughs> this is, this is, oh my goodness. I think I need to draw my asymptote in a, in a little bit of a darker color than yellow. I didn't even see it. Let me try that again. Because it's got to be approaching the asymptote. So here's 
here's the asymptote. Good enough, whatever. Okay, so the domain is from two to infinity, but not including two because there's an asymptote at two. So parentheses or soft bracket around the two. Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is x equals because every single point on this line has the same x coordinate, and that x coordinate is two. So it's x equals two. Any questions? All right, if you guys like algebra, you're gonna like what we're doing next. We are moving on to 37. Solve the equation. Okay, so we've got, so we've got an equation here. Wait, am I in the right problem? Yes, okay. So I've got an equation here with an unknown inside my function. So I really need to isolate that unknown. So to do that, I'm gonna rewrite this logarithmic equation in exponential form so that I can isolate that x. So six squared equals x minus one. And we're almost done. There you go. So 41, which is the next one. Do I still have time to keep, it's only seven minutes. We're gonna keep going. We're moving on to 41. Two to the six power equals x minus four. So 64 equals x minus four. So that makes x 68. I want to do one with an extraneous solution. I was going to do 42, but there's no extraneous. So I'm changing it and we are gonna do number 40. Okay, so these logs, these logs have, these logs have the same base. They're at a base of 10 because the base is not written, so you can assume the base is a 10. This problem has a log, a base of a two, so that's clear what that base is. But if there's no base written, it's 10. So we've got log base 10 of 21 minus x, 21 minus 7x equals log base 10 of this quantity right here. Well, when we have, we have exponents to the same, bases to the same exponent. Remember last class we were doing x, now I'm making stuff up, um, three, to the, three to the x, equals three squared, we can set the exponents equal to each other because then we know x equals two, they're the same base. Here, these logarithms have the same base. So we can do the same thing. That music next door, y'all. One day, one day, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We can set 21 minus 7x equal to, now this is a binomial that's been squared. So we have to FOIL that out. So that's x minus three times x minus three. And so that's gonna be, if you do that in your head, x squared minus three x minus three x for a total of minus six x. And then negative three times negative three is plus nine. So that's x squared. Is everybody okay with that, that I just did that in my head? Stop me if I'm going too fast or if you have a question about something. I just multiplied those two binomials. 
Now, we've got to figure out what x is. So I'm going to throw everything to the same side, combine the like terms, and see if I can't factor that. That's going to be 0 equals x squared plus x minus 12. x plus 4, x minus 3. All right, so that's going to clearly be x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. However, this is an extraneous solution. Here's your answer. And the reason is because if I put a three in right here, okay, makes this zero. If I do 10, because right, the base is a 10, 10 to what power equals zero? Nothing. 10 to what power equals zero? It's not gonna work. So this is an extraneous solution. So here is our answer, x equals negative four. The trick, this, the, I think extraneous solutions in any type of problem are, are kind of difficult. Most of the time you'll get extraneous solutions when you square both sides of an equation, or you take the square root of both sides. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. Because if you have one equals, or sorry, negative one equals one, we know that's false, right? But then if I square both sides, I, I get one equals one. So just, and so as we work, if we're working through an equation to solve it and we square both sides, we might get some solutions that work, that look like they work, but they don't work just because we manipulated the equation so we could get our answer. So that's why we have to check the solutions to make sure they work. All right, my video is over. Anyone want to say anything? No one said anything today. That's it. Happy spring break. All right.